2014. In Batangas, there is a cooperative there that was started by 59 farmers. And they contributed at that time 200 pesos each, which they even found stiff at the time. So they were able to raise more than 11,000, 11,800. They put up a store and everybody was supposed to buy from that store. And when the prices were higher than the market, they said, don't worry. Whatever profit the store generates is going back to us. That's 40 years ago. Their little store, after one year, had the, not 10,000 worth of goods, but 20. And after another year, 40,000 worth of goods. 80. It kept on doubling. And uh, they discovered that one of their biggest uh, products for sale were feeds for chicken and for hogs. And so later on, they decided to mechanize the process of uh, making feeds because that was the biggest sale. Well, after 40 years, they invited me and said, Senator, how much do you think we sold last year? Oh, you're probably now in the millions. And they said, no, a little bit more. You mean you feed a billion? They said, yes. As a matter of fact, last year, we sold three billion. That little barangay that started with 59 farmers has expanded to 6,000 members, 6,000 families for that matter, and they sold more than 3 billion worth of goods, mostly feeds, and of course chicken products, and pork products, and so on. That is an example of what a cooperative can do. So it is an example that we use because you can actually visit the place and, and see their operations. It's what happens when people cooperate with each other, which is uh, quite difficult for Filipinos, cooperating with each other. Even Jose Rizal complained about that. Anyway, I took down some notes because uh, due to age, I forget many of the things I want to say. And let us start with what is needed and what we want. I suppose these are statements where you may or may not object, but I think uh, they're, they're possible. For instance, we want a just, progressive, and equitable society. Fair. We are against discrimination, all kinds, race, color, creed, handicap, or even sexual orientation, which is in the news today. If you agree that the Filipino is worth dying for, and I agree that this is debatable, but if you are somehow agree that the Filipino is worth dying for, then you agree that you are your brother's keeper. That has religious undertones, but that is very important in my talk. You are your brother's keeper. Because if you don't care about your brother, why bother? Most individuals want to improve their life, but because individually they find this very difficult, very hard to do, they decide to bond together. They decide to get together. Successful bonding starts within a company, a community, school, or any organization with dozens of members. Raising funds, or what we call capital build-up, is done by salary deduction or regular weekly contributions. Payment of obligations is also by salary deduction or other agreed modes of payment. 
There is no special knowledge or skill for this. Only honest money hunters is required. Because even if you do all of this, but your manager runs away with the money, then you start from scratch. The successful bonding of members or employees form cooperatives in order to make a juridical entity after registration with the Cooperative Development Authority. But let's not forget that cooperatives are supposed to be autonomous. A member learns and is encouraged to save. That's a step forward. Then he has access to credit or some capital. He will also realize some profit or dividend annually. Learn the responsibility of payment of obligations. Many of these things we might take for granted, but sometimes these have to be emphasized so that they know what they're getting into. So an individual can venture into a new business and must accept the risks of running the business. A cooperative with bigger capital and know-how can venture into a bigger business. When I was talking to you about the Patangas Cooperative, they tried to borrow something like 30 million to expand their poultry business and there was no cooperative bank who could lend them 30 million because it was over the maximum allowable limit. There's a certain term in banking terms. Maximum allowable limit is uh, well depending on the capital of the cooperative of the bank. So they had to pull several banks together and uh, that was the only time they were able to get some financing. There is a cooperative in the military service that uh, has now more than 5 billion in savings. That's when I was talking to them. I think they now have 7 billion. But when they had 5 billion, I said, why don't you segregate 5% of your capital is 250 million and enter into some business that you can control. For instance, shoe making for these soldiers. You can make a deal with the manufacturer in Marikina that supplies shoes to the military. I remember some widows seeing me because they were making uniforms. They were sewing uniforms for the military when they were in Tondo. And then they got transferred to Sapampala and they lost their connections. So they asked me to help get financing so that they can continue with the business. We went to DBP and DBP gladly lent them when they were sure that there was a market for their services. The problem with big business, especially like the army, it begins to attract opportunists and also undesirable elements. Those who want to get rich quick. That is also another risk you have to take when you are becoming successful. It is much better to join an existing operating and successful property than start a new one. But a big brother property is not always available. I have recommended to the Cooperative Development Authority to be a partner of the cooperative movement. By partner here, I mean that is, that is my formula for, for partner. P, as a promoter of cooperativism. A, for arbitration purposes between cooperatives and the government, R for registration of new cooperatives, T for training, N for networking with cooperatives and other interested parties like you. 
E for education of cognitive and R for regulation and recognition. We should have some kind of uniform awards so that not just anybody can, uh, can win an award. You know, a landmark gives awards, but only from the borrowers. So if you don't borrow anything, they don't give you any award. I said, how about those who pay the loans? I look forward to the day when the cooperative movement will finance the cooperative development authority and give direction to the role of cooperatives in the country. With little or no government interference, cooperatives can start paying taxes. We have tax exempt, by the way, as business enterprises are expected to do. And finally, convert Filipinos into a cooperative business system where majority participates, benefits, and shares in the risks of the business. Cooperativism is an alternative economic system, I think even the Vatican now recognizes this, that has its own built-in social responsibility. The main objective of cooperativism is to erase mass poverty in our country. Thank you.